Uh, Boolean logic is a branch of mathematics that deals with manipulating the true values of true and false. Now, this is particularly relevant to computers because it is binary logic. It is that those two states of either on or off, ones or zeros, voltage flowing, voltage not flowing. It deals with just these two values, two values of ones and zeros. The state can either be in either of these two values at any given point in time, either one or a zero. In other words, one is true and zero is false. You can't have those in-between states. So it is of particular relevance to computers. Why is it called Boolean logic? Well, this chap here by the name of George Bull. Now notice when he expired, 1864. There was probably no computers around at that time. So this was, he created the mathematics around his thoughts and ideas way before computers were created. He was a mathematician who created this system of working with truth values. A little bit about his history, he was a sh born to a shoemaker um, around about 1815. Um, he was taught maths by his father, obviously he was a bit of a genius in mathematics. Went on at 16, became a teacher at the age of 20, opened his own school. Um, became the first professor of mathematics at the University College of Cork in Ireland. Um, having no degree, wrote a couple of books. Anyway, enough about the history of Mr. Bull, George Bull. Moving on to Boolean expressions. So he devised this system which said that an expression can either be um, in two states, a true or false state. Let's look at one. This expression here, 1 plus 3. Is that a Boolean expression? It evaluates out to 4. We know it evaluates out to 4. But is it a Boolean expression? What about this one? This doesn't incidentally evaluate out to either a true or a false. Therefore, it's not a Boolean expression. This one here, 1 plus 3 equals 7. Now, if you ask this as a question, 1 plus 3 equals 7? You would say yes. 1 plus 3 does not equal 7. So this evaluates out to be false. What about some of these other examples? X greater than 100. True or false? We have to know what X is, of course, before we can evaluate whether this becomes true or false. But yes, all of these are Boolean expressions because as long as we know the values to fill in for those variables, then we can transfer these into either a true or a false. There's a total of seven Boolean operators and these are what we use to evaluate problems. Four of these are simple logic gates and then we have another three, which are the composite logic gates. So simple logic gates and then the composite logic gates. How will you be assessed on this? You'll be given a set of binary values and asked to evaluate the answers based on the gate that's being applied to the, the two sets of binary values. In reality, of course, we're just going to evaluate one and one just to kind of understand how it works. The computer at any given microsecond or even smaller second than that has to evaluate thousands and thousands of these at any one time. Um, and it does this through the use of logic gates. That's what their name given to these, the circuitry that's been created inside the CPU. The circuitry um, has the ability to manipulate and work out these these gate values for us. They're made up of is a, an old transistor and this is a symbol that you'll see inside the electronic um, scheme diagrams. The, if the gate is open, no current can flow, it's in a zero state. If the gate is closed, the current can flow, it's in a one state. So it can be in either of two states, one or zero. And that's what we're 
is used to build the arithmetic logic unit inside the CPU. It's used by the computer to perform its logic operations. Let's look at them, some of these um, gates. So the simplest gate of all is the NOT gate or inverter. And just as the name suggests, it inverts, inverts the state of the bit value which flows into the gate. So if we receive a 1, it sends out a 0. If it receives a 0, it sends out a 1. And it's signified, it's shown with this triangle, small circle at the end, and input and output. That's a NOT gate. Circle at the front. The truth table for a NOT gate, this is what it looks like. So standard table, input value of A, output value A bar, which is, signifies that it's a NOT performed on it. So when you have a 0, it becomes a 1. You've got a 1, it becomes a 0. This is it shown in an expression. So let's look at the first expression, not x greater than 0. So if x is 10 and y is 15, then is x, first of all, we're substituting the x with the value for 10, 10 greater than 0? Yes. So this part is true. But then we apply a not expression onto it. In other words, we invert it. So this being true, so I should have wrote true there, um, evaluates out to be false. Not x greater than 0 is true. The second one is x greater than y. x is 10, y is 15. x greater than y. No, it's not. Therefore, it's a false for this part. Apply the not onto the false and we take it out to be a true as a, the result. Let's have a look at it to see how it's used inside a computer program. So it doesn't matter which computer program you use, they all use Boolean logic within them. This one here is Pascal. Though it's quite readable, even though we've only come across C Sharp or, or Java up until now. Um, it still has this, now there's a not keyword being applied to an expression here. So asking the user, enter a number from 0 to 6, read ln, read the line, place it into a variable called choice, which is a char variable, char data type. And while not choice in 0 to 6, so as long as the choice is not one of these, it will continue um, and write this line on the screen. So it will say enter a number from 0 to 6 um, until that choice becomes 0 to 6. So this NOT keyword in other programming languages, you may not have the NOT keyword. It might be something else. But there will always be an equivalent of inverting a value inside a computer program. Okay, the other gate, the second gate then, is the AND gate. This is shown, now I think, like to think of this as the D part of the AND. So when I look, come across it, I just look for the D, and that shows the AND gate. And the AND gate can take two or more input values. Now if you send in two values, then both of these inputs, both of the, the values which go into the AND gate, have to be true before the output can be true. So this has to be true and that has to be true. Both inputs being true, then the output will be true. Otherwise the output becomes zero. The truth table for this looks like this. So inputs A and B, we've got, if both inputs were zero, the output shown with a dot between the values becomes zero. If the inputs were 0 and 1, if, in other words, if just one of the input values were 1, the output is still 0. If either one of these values was 1 and the other one was 0, the output is still 0. So only when in the AND gate, only when both or all of the inputs are true, does the output become true. So again, here's an example here. If x is 10 and y is 15, x greater than 0, yes, that's true, x is 10, 
and why less than 20? Yes, that is true as well. So both inputs are true, true and true, one and one. Therefore, the output becomes true. The second expression here, x equals 10, yes, that is true. x greater than y, this time, this part is false. True and a false, therefore the output is false as well. That's the AND gate. So again, we're looking at the simple um, logic gates just now. So we've seen the NOT, which inverts the AND, which requires both inputs to be true for the output to be true. Here's an example of how AND is used um, on a computer program. Again, this is Pascal. We have a variable called blind date is attractive, um, which is a Boolean variable. Now, Boolean, of course, this George Bull person has way back from the eight, late 18th century um, eventually been eternalized in computers in the form of his data type, the Boolean data type. So Boolean data types can either be true or false. Money in pocket is an integer variable. Here's an if statement. Now all your if statements in computer programs require Boolean logic. If expression, and that expression evaluates out to either be true or false. So if blind date is attractive equals true, and you have money in your pocket, greater than 100, not sure if 100 pounds these days is enough um, for a, a blind date, but anyway. Um, then right line, let's go to Polladino's, which I can only assume is some um, upper class, uh, maybe Italian restaurant or, or something. Um, else, so if you don't have, if your money in pocket is greater than 100, your blind date is attractive, you want to go to Polladino's. Otherwise, let's go to Burger King. So, so the if statements always tend to use these expressions within them as well. And here's an example then of using AND. So two, two, we're evaluating two expressions here, two values, um, two expressions which both have to be true before this line of code can be executed, otherwise this line of code will be executed. So both conditions are true before we can go on to complete this. Okay, on to the OR gate then. So the OR gate then needs at least, it has at least two inputs, but only one of those inputs requires to be true uh, before the outcome is true. So if they are both true, one of them is true, so one, so A or B, one or the other, as long as one of them is true, then the output becomes true. If they are both set at zero, then the output is going to be zero. Let's look at the truth gate or logic truth table for this. Um, so notice here, if they are both zero, output is zero. So for an OR, it's shown as a, shown with a plus sign. So don't confuse that with the AND um, symbol. It's not a plus as in an AND, it's the OR symbol, the Boolean logic OR. So zero plus zero, zero gives me zero. It's only when one of the bits is one does the output become true? And again, here's an example. If x is 10 and y is 15, x greater than zero, yes, that is true. y equals 15, or x less than 20, x less than 20, yes, that is true as well. x is 10, x is less than 20, x is greater than zero, so either one of these is true, so therefore that is true x equals 10, yes, or x greater than y. x is not greater than y, so that becomes a false. Well, at least one of the inputs is true, therefore the whole expression evaluates out to be true. That's the OR gate. Let's look at how an OR gate works in Pascal. If day of week equals Friday or day of week equals Saturday, then let's go out clubbing, otherwise stay home and study. So only one of the conditions has to be true before it will go on and do the statement after the then. So this is using the OR keyword. Again, in some programming languages, you'll have different symbols that are used to show an OR. Show an OR. 
Let's look at some examples of Boolean expressions. So here's one here, x equals 10 or y equals 10 and z greater than x. Does that evaluate out to be true or false? Here's the inputs. And this is it shown now in a kind of logic gate schematic format. X is 10, Y is 15 and Z is 20. So let's evaluate these input values first of all. Z greater than X. Z is 20. X is 10. 20 is greater than 10. Therefore, this is true. Let's double check this. Z is 20. X is 10. 20 is greater than 10, therefore that's a true. X equals 10, yes it is, so this value here is going to be true. Y equals 10, Y does not equal 10, Y is 15, so this pin here on the gate is going to be a false. Now let's pass them through the gates and see what we receive on the outside. So we'll do this one first, which is the OR gate. So at least one of these inputs has to be true before the output becomes true. So one of them is true, therefore down here we receive the value true out, going out as well. And this one is true, so this pin here, so this AND symbol then, the AND gate, receives two true values, so it's sending out a true value. So therefore light bulb switches on, in other words, power goes through and that switches whichever circuit is going to switch on um, at the end of it. Another example, so here we've got x equals 10, y equals 15 and z equals 20 this time. So does x equal y or not x greater than z this time? This is what we're trying to establish here. So x equals 10 and y equals 15, so x equals y evaluates out to be false because x does not equal y, um, not x greater than z. Now, sorry, um, let's look at the, the circuit instead of the, um, let's see how this evaluates out on the circuit. So assume that x equals 10, y equals 15 and z equals 20. So if x equals y, x equals y, this is false x does not equal y so this here is going to be false in other words a zero goes in to the or gate uh, here's a not gate this is negating or co converting from z ones to zeros and zeros to ones let's see what goes in to the not gate first of all the expression is x greater than z is x greater than z x is 10 z is 20 so is x greater than z? No, it's not. Therefore, what we're passing in here is a false value or a zero value. So zero goes in here, zero goes in here, zero becomes one after being passed through the not gate. So when it gets passed through the not gate, it becomes a one. This or gate is receiving a zero and a one. With an or gate, one of the expressions is true for the output to be true so it is receiving at least one of them therefore the output becomes true as well here's another one x is 10 y is 15 z is 20 um, let's check x equals y this is per we're performing an and on x equals y and x equals 10 so this is the and gate so this part of the expression is being evaluated by this gate here. The y is greater than z is being sent in as an input on this line here. So let's check this first of all. We'll do the, on the top, y is greater than z. y is 15, z is 20. y is not greater than z. Therefore, we're sending in a zero along this line x equals y is false as well x is 10 and y is 15 therefore a false or a zero goes in on this pin of the and gate x equals 10 is true 
therefore a 1 is going in here. This is an AND gate. With an AND gate, both inputs have to be true. At the moment, only one of those inputs is true, therefore this is sending out a false. The OR gate likes to receive at least one true value. It's receiving both false values, therefore it will send out a false value. Probably the last one. Let's have a look at this one. X is 10, Y is 15, and Z is 20. X greater than Y, X is 10, Y is 15. Is X greater than Y? No, it's not, so therefore zero. Z greater than Y, Z is 20, Y is 15. 20 greater than 15, yes. So it's a true going in there. X is less than Z, X is 10, and Z is 20, therefore x is less than z, therefore that becomes true, true going in. The AND gate, which can receive either two or more input values, is receiving at least two true, one zero. For an AND gate to send out a true value, all of its inputs have to be true. Now it only has two of those inputs which are true, therefore this is sending out a zero. Then it comes across a NOT gate, and the NOT gate, the NOT gate's job is to convert from zeros to ones and ones to zeros. Therefore, this is sending out a one, and the light bulb switches itself on. Okay, so moving on now, let's see how we can use those simple um, gates, the AND, the OR, and the NOT, to perform some bit operations on some binary numbers. So this is typical of a question that you could be asked. Perform a logical AND between the numbers and you're given two binary numbers. Now let's see how we can evaluate this. So the first step, you may be given these um, an, um, in, a, in a horizontal, you could be given these in a horizontal um, on, the, on the exam paper, they may be shown horizontally, not vertically like this, not up and down like this. What you have to do is take the bits and AND the two bits together. So one, an AND gate, we know that the AND gate requires both inputs to be true. So one AND one, so the output's going to be one. One AND one, output one. Zero and one, output's going to be zero. Zero, 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 zero. Both inputs have to be true before the output can be true. And you continue on like this. Now you can either start from the left hand side for an AND, it's okay, you can start from the left. I like to start from the right hand side and work your way across um, the, the, the values here. One and zero, again zero, 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 one, zero. That's a one. Zero and one zero zero zero. So that one there should have been uh, one. Okay, a logical or between the same two numbers. This time or. So or states that at least one of the bits has to be true. So in this case, we've got one or one. Yes, at least one of them is true. In other words, only when we have a zero and a zero does the output become true. As long as there is a one in any of the two bits, then the output becomes true. So one, 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 one. And you can keep going on. That's the only one which is a zero. So that's the logical OR between these, these two numbers. Now the next gate, so that's so just to summarise then, um, the, the NOT, the AND and the OR gate we've already looked at. These are the three simple gates, so NOT, AND and OR. Moving on, this is some more of them. The exclusive OR, or the XOR, exclusive OR, OR, the XOR. Exclusive OR 
states that one and only one of those inputs can be true before the output is true. So only one of the inputs can be true, which is different from the OR. In the OR, if you had both inputs as true, the output can still be true. But with the exclusive OR, only one of those input bits can be true for the output to be true. There's a symbol for it. Again, it's the standard OR, but this time it's got an additional curve at the start and then the, the input values for it. Okay, so this time we're going to look at the exclusive OR gate, the last of the simple gates, XOR, shown in this. That's a symbol for it, a plus sign with a circle around it. The plus sign, of course, is the OR sign, which was used to represent the OR. The exclusive OR has a circle around it this time. So we're going to look at this expression using these two values. X is 10 or Y is 15. So X equals 10, Y equals 15. X is greater than zero. Yes, that is true. Y is less than 20. That is also true. Both of these values are true. So exclusively, both are true. Therefore, the output is going to be false. Second one, X equals 10. Yes, that is true. Is X greater than Y? X is 10, Y is 15. No, X is not greater than Y. Therefore, that's a false. Zero, one which means that the output is true exclusively. Only one of the inputs is true. So that's your exclusive OR gate. Okay, so now we're going to do an operation, an exclusive OR between two binary values. And here we're looking for only one of the input bits being true for the output to be true. So one and one both are true, therefore the output is going to be zero. Both true, output zero. At least one is true, output one. One, zero, zero. Again, only one of the inputs, we're comparing these, these inputs, only one of these inputs true for the output to be true. True, yeah, zero, one, zero. 1, 1, and 1. In addition to those basic gates, there's also the three composite gates. Now, these are all, they contain the letter N, as you can see here. So it's a NAND gate, a NOR gate, and an XNOR gate. Now, these are all just as they're described. It's the AND, the OR, and the XOR performed, followed immediately by a NOT operation. So, AND, OR, and, not, and XOR followed immediately by a negation or inverting of the bit value gives us NAND, NOR, and X nor. So we treat these as standard and or and X ors, and then we simply reverse the result. Once you reach the output, we simply reverse the result. This is what their symbols look like, and they all have notice this small circle at the end. Of course, we saw the small circle on the not gate. There's a NOT gate here, has a small circle at the end. So that small circle on the end of these um, simple gates gives us the NAND, NOR, and the XNOR. And these are known as your composite gates, made up of more than one gate. That's the truth tables here. It's the same symbol with a bar along the top. The bar along the top simply negates um, the values. Now, logic gates really are the basic building blocks of computer systems. And on a CPU, you could have billions and billions of these made up. Um, using combinations of this logic, we can get complicated, very complex circuits made up. 
um, on the... So, just to summarise then, and close um, this, this, uh, this topic, the NOT gate takes one input, reverses it. The AND gate requires that all the inputs are true before the output becomes true. The OR gate requires only one of those inputs, only one of those inputs um, can be true before the output. The OR gate requires at least one of the inputs to be true before the output can be true. The exclusive OR needs only one of those bits being true before it returns or pushes forward the value of true. The NAND, the NOR and the XNOR, these are all exactly the same as the AND, OR and XOR, followed by the NOT at the end of these, these gates. So the, the, the same, but just negate the end result um, when you're producing that. Boolean logic is particularly compatible with computers as they both work in this bi-stable environment. Bi-stable simply means that there are two values, either true or false, one or zero. And that's where this is particularly important in computing 